listening to TMZ Movie Crashers. Welcome back to TMZ's Movie Crashers. I'm your host, Fabian Garcia from TMZ. I'm your host, Paige Count from 2Fab. We have to talk about Don't Worry Darling. And this is going to be our only segment today because there's so much to talk about. Yes. And the saga, I think, is finally over. The because movie, the, the movie, out. the movie came out. The numbers are in. The reviews are in. And even on the tail end of things, <laughs> there is still so much drama. There's the still, last week, the very last week. There's still so yes. much drama, and we're gonna get into it right off the bat. So, here's where we'll begin. Uh, right before the movie came out, I believe on Thursday, Olivia Wilde did her like last little bit of press. Mm -hmm. She went on the Colbert Show, talking about the movie, talking about all the drama. And just to kind of sum it up, she basically denied Spitgate once again. Yeah. She essentially denied that there was any feud between her and Florence Pugh again. And then she also addressed the Shia LaBeouf thing where she seemingly got caught lying and, and kind of misleading people into like what actually happened there. Was yeah. he fired? Did he quit? Who knows? And she kind of just, and, you know, Colbert was trying to pin her down and make her admit that she had fired him. She didn't commit to that wording, though. She mm -hmm. basically said... It was clear that the stars, the lead stars, Shia and Florence at the time, uh, were not getting along and that they just were not working well together. And when push came to shove, I had to make a decision between the both of them. I ended up choosing Florence Pugh yeah. and Shia sort of exited. That's kind of how she put yeah. it. Um, but again, she denied the drama, the feuding between her mm -hmm. and Florence, and she denied Spitgate. Spitgate is kind of a is kind of a, a trailing thought at this point. I think yeah. it's, it's a footnote. It's a footnote in this whole it saga. Came it, it came and went. Time no, exactly. Nobody really cares. So Livy Wilde does that on Thursday. And then on Friday, I believe, or maybe even that day, Thursday as well, either sometime, so either Thursday or Friday. They came, it, everything was coming back to back. It was back to back to back. Yeah. There was a bombshell report that was published uh, by Vulture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was actually maybe the editor in chief of Vulture. It was like either their, their senior reporter or somebody. Yeah. Somebody who's credible, reputable. Vulture's a reputable outlet. They don't just make up bull crap. Um, they, came the, yeah, they came out with a, a report basically saying, the feud between Florence and Olivia is, in fact, real. They did, in fact, argue on set. In fact, what they said was that there was a, quote, screaming match on set. And apparently uh, what that stemmed from was basically the rumor all along was that Olivia Wilde was an absentee director yeah. and that she would abscond with Harry Styles during pivotal shooting moments of, of the movie and that she was just missing from a lot of big scenes. Off with Harry Styles, banging in the trailer or something. Who knows? But... That's what this report confirmed, that yes, Florence Pugh felt- And it felt, was from, they had one anonymous, anonymous source. Yes, who was, who, apparently, was who was apparently very plugged in. And, yeah. and again, I, I believe this report. I mean, we'll get into that in a second, but basically yeah. that's what they're saying, that Florence Pugh was upset with Olivia Wilde for being, for being missing and absent and kind of leaving her hanging and kind of leaving her to shoot scenes on her own with other crew members, uh, apparently some big scenes. Um, and that eventually this 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 friction boiled over into a legitimate screaming match that was between the breaking between point. the breaking yeah. point between the two women. They were mm -hmm. yelling at each other. And so that's crazy. So basically, this report confirmed what everybody suspected all along. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I, I basically just said to myself, well, just like I said, when there's smoke, there's fire. And sure enough, there's fire. And it's just so obvious. It was so, so obvious, despite Olivia Wilde trying to deny. And not just Olivia Wilde, by the way. Warner Brothers has yeah. been trying to put out this fire, too. They, they released a statement, too. They did. And, yeah. and right after that report came out, I think either the same day or like maybe 12 hours later, uh, a letter was published. Mm -hmm. A letter was published, and I think People Magazine yeah, obtained it. it. Um, 40 crew members mm -hmm. from the movie signed this letter, definitively shooting down... There was no feud between Olivia and Florence. There was no screaming match specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and they all... And there I don't was no know, unprofessional behavior. No unprofessional behavior. Correct. Yeah. Um, and they essentially... I mean, we don't have to get into the, the nitty gritty of it all, but essentially the letter was firmly denying mm -hmm. there was no beef. This is all much ado about nothing. Here are 40 of our names from the crew members signing off on this letter we're, we're on the record saying it's bullcrap, it's a lie, this is not true. And these are 40 crew members, they're they're high-ranking crew members. It's like yeah. the DP, the art director, there's like some gaffers, like lead gaffer and stuff like that. So it's a lot of like lead crew members. And when I saw that, I on the face of it, it sounds impactful, right? It sounds like, oh my God, 40 crew members signing their name to this letter, stamping it down. Oh my God, is the Vulture article true? Right, kind of, try because they're trying to, that's what they're tr they were trying to do. They were trying to water down the credibility of the Vulture article. But then I th sat back and thought about it, and I don't know how you felt about it, but 
to me, I was, I was looking at all the names of who these crew members were. Again, these were the lead, like, lead DP, lead lighting guy, lead this, lead that, right? Like, the, 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 basically the, the main people from mm -hmm. the crew, right? And I looked at IMDb, and I was counting the numbers. How many crew members were actually involved in this movie? It's, it's north of, like, 150. North of 150 people worked on this movie. So not even close to Not half. even close to half. Yeah. Not even, so basically, to me, it's either these people are just blatantly lying, and trying to save face for both Olivia Wilde and Warner Brothers by extension. Yeah. Um, that's a, certainly a possibility. And the cynic in, see, in me says, yeah, I, I kind of believe that. That or they're just ignorant and unaware. And maybe they're not lying. Maybe they're saying, well, I wasn't aware of anything personally. So, yeah, I'll sign my name to that. But I'm like, well, just because you were unaware of anything of a shouting match... Who knows what there's who knows how many PAs might have overheard it? Who knows how many gaffers or electricians might have heard it? You know what I mean? There's so many crew members working on the set. We don't know where the shouting match took place. Yeah. We don't know when it took place or to what or how loud it might have been. Apparently it word about this shouting match actually spread around the set. That's what the Vulture article said. And so yeah, so maybe you're ignorant and you just and you you're you're saying, okay, I ignorance is bliss. I didn't know. I did whatever. So maybe you're like using that. To say, oh, I'm actually not lying. I actually didn't hear about it. I don't have personal knowledge of this incident. But just because you don't have personal knowledge of it doesn't mean it actually didn't take place. Yeah. That or you're just blatantly lying, which I think actually might be the case. That they're just straight up lying through their teeth. So I, so to me, the Vulture article still carries weight. Yeah. It still has a lot of merit. I believe it. I think most, and frankly, I think most people believe it. Yeah. They believe something happened on that set that Florence Pugh does not like Olivia Wilde for whatever reason. That there's a problem. And, and the re and again, like the the proof is in the pudding here. Like she has not been promoting this movie. She didn't do any press at Venice. It was awkward. She went out of her way to not be near Olivia Wilde or be photographed with her. So all the clues are there. So what do you, what do you make of it? First of all, what do you make of the Vulture article? What do you make of the forty people signing their names to shooting it down? So when the Vulture article came out, I was like. I'm not surprised. Of course. That was my first reaction. Of course not. I'm not surprised. Like, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like, frankly, not even just that. It was almost like, uh, duh. Yeah. It was a duh thing. But I find, but I was, ha this is going to make me sound like gossipy, but I was like, ooh, finally, re some details. Yes. And that one another thing, I, I don't mean to interrupt your thought, but like it's one other thing I wanted to say about this too, I agree. It's about damn time that somebody actually reported the real story because frankly, Variety and THR and all those like traditional trade publications could have easily gotten this story. Oh, totally. But honestly, they're a bunch of ass kissers and they they do a lot of like cozy press and they're always trying to cozy up to the to the talent, to the studio. So they pick and choose what stories they want to do. Vulture yeah. has some balls. They're more of like a not they're not a fringe outlet, not by any means. They're actually quite mainstream, but they do stories where, yeah, they'll do some actual reporting, even if that makes some people look bad. Yeah. Like Olivia Wilde looks bad. But that doesn't matter. They got to the truth of it. They did some reporting. It took a long time. I don't know why it took this long for somebody to break the story, but I'm happy they did, and shame on all those other publications who could have easily done this story, gotten to yeah. the truth of the matter, but just decided, well, they're denying it on the record. On, denial, on, den on the record, denials mean nothing to me, especially in this town. Are you kidding me? You take everything at face value? That's absurd. That's ridiculous. Anyway, sorry. Continue with your it's thought, okay. please. No, I, I like what you said there. Yeah. Um. So first off, I want to note that, I don't know if we've said this before, but... Olivia, uh, sorry, Florence Pugh was like a fan of Olivia Wilde. At first like she it, was. At first she was. She There's was. even an old interview of her talking to Beanie Fa um, Feldstein, Feldstein. Yeah. who worked on, I was in Booksmart, Olivia right. Wilde's like directorial movie. debut. Yes. And she was like, oh my God, like I want to work with Olivia, da 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 da. So, she was a fan of Olivia fan Wilde. Of Olivia. And even early on in the, in the shooting, she was posting a lot of positive stuff yes. about it and tagging her directly. So yep. between, again, all the clues, yep. put the clues together like that, <laughs> what was it, the Charlie Day meme. You put the clues together some shit went down. Okay? Yes. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I agree. Literally, that's how we were like, okay, so how did this happen? When did it happen? Right, and you're like right. putting these TikToks together, right? Yeah, and, 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 and look, the TikTokers who kind of pieced this together first, they're not profound geniuses. No. This is obvious stuff. Like, it's like, just look at this, look at that, I mean, connect the dots. Like, it's not it's, complicated. It's obvious. And, I, and I'm usually a person that's kind of like, well, we need proof, we need proof. But Sure, and so, I, I'm the same way too. Yes, especially, uh, obviously, as journalists. But the fact that, you know, I think... Why would this anonymous source go go through all these details? To, to, why would Vulture go through all this work right. if it wasn't true? And by the way, I should note that the author of the story, I don't know his name, but he's a high-ranking journalist at Vulture. He said that, by the way, the, the lawyers who are at Vulture gutted this story. So what you have here isn't even a, a I full— I saw that. —isn't even the full— I had more. He said he had more reporting, but he couldn't report it because the lawyers took it out. So there might be even more to the story. Might, might, might leak out even in the future. We'll see. Yeah. But continue, please. So Sorry. I, 
but then when so I was like, OK, that's true. Like, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. And then when the crew members came out, the 40 crew members, With yes, letter, it seemed like a lot. Their yeah. letter, blah, blah, blah. Their rah, rah letter. But yes. OK, yeah, yeah. so. I agree with you that I, I don't I don't think it was maybe a collective. I think maybe some of them probably are like, oh, that's just gossip. Like, I didn't hear it. Right. Or if someone did tell me that, do oh, I don't believe actual, it. Or do you think there's a conspiracy that they are like, let's sign our names to this, even though we know it's true. Let's just if, if there's there's I power in numbers, let's just get together and know. lie and lie and just double down and double. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's the conspiracy that I believe. Well, frankly. I, think it, I think it might have been like a kind of like a combination. I think some people might have been like, actually oh, let's get a ignorant, group together. And right. I think a lot, some people might have been actually ignorant. And I think other people possibly, you know, I think um, if you think about a screaming match in general, mm -hmm. um, someone could Im interpret it as, oh, they were just, it was just a little tiff. Like they weren't speaking loudly. Right. Other people right. like that was a screaming match. True. So True. I think that maybe some it all, people. It's all in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. Someone, yes. someone could say, oh, I heard them like arguing, but it wasn't a screaming match. Right. So maybe so it's like, like, it's kind of watered down a little exactly. bit. It's like, oh, it yeah. wasn't a screaming match. And I, and I definitely people, think. People get a little heated on the set of movies it, sometimes. It 100%. happens. Especially so with directors I, and talent. Like, come so on. I think some people could have just been like, oh, they just, you know, got a little tiff. Written it off kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, and I think that as well. And then also when you pointed out, you know, they just wanted to be like, show their, um, you know, show their on Olivia's side or whatever. Right, War the solidarity. Side, the solidarity. Yeah, yeah. But I definitely think there was more about Warner Brothers and Olivia Wilde. I think so too. I think yeah. Warner Brothers, frankly, might have orchestrated this letter. Like, hey, and, you want to work for us? Yeah, that and that. Come and, on, and they might have they might have also handpicked the crew members themselves, yeah. gone around and said, hey, mm -hmm. what do you know? What don't you know? Well, you, and then once they've kind of once they sort of filtered everybody out, engaged everybody on what they know or didn't know, then they handpicked the people like, okay, you're gonna you're gonna sign your name to this yeah. letter, you're gonna sign your name to I this think, letter. I think Warner and I'm Brothers. Sure the, and I'm involved. sure the crew members were just like, yeah, whatever, I don't care, I just yeah, want to keep this working. Big, this big studio, wanting right. To do this, of course, I'm gonna sign it. Absolutely. And but I'm sure there were there were people that were like, oh no, I don't want to sign it because they probably thought it was true because right. they probably saw it happen or right. it was like that's true. So so I definitely think that something that, happened. Yeah, something so happened. so there's that. So there's that that happened. Then the movie comes out. Uh, I mean, we're going to talk about the review of the movie in just a little bit here. We'll we're going to talk box and office, office numbers as well. But even as the movie was rolling out, Florence Pugh did one last little press push, mm -hmm. sort of, sort of. She posted um, a, a photo dump, if you will, on Instagram. She had two posts. She had two posts. She did. Yeah. She, so she did two posts, all photo dumps mm -hmm. of behind the scenes stuff from the movie. Mm -hmm. Seemingly looking happy and trying to make yeah. everything look like kumbaya and like it was a great set and she had like a very funny thing funny thing yeah. she had a very long caption thanking the crew members mm -hmm. thanking the the cast thanking everybody that was involved for such a wonderful time and a memorable shoot I will always be grateful I will always be grateful we don't have to read the whole sh yeah, shebang or anything things, yeah. but. And then in the photos, in the behind the scenes photos that she posted, she posted a lot of like camera operators and things like that and, and lighting guys yeah. and gaffers and this and that. People that she was working with directly, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, it was interesting. She posted uh, a photo, and I think we actually have it here. Have she posted photo, yeah. a photo of her and Olivia yeah. Wilde. Now, this is not a behind the scenes shot. This, I, at least I don't think it is. This looks like a, a screen grab from the movie to me. I feel like that's when they're in like the 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 shop. Like the clothing store. Yeah, I feel like it's so, kind of look, that. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. It, to me, it looks like an actual scene from the movie. I think Perhaps so too. it is actually a behind-the-scenes shot of them kind of talking. I don't know, but it look, it looks like it's from the movie though. It's not it like a, yeah. it's not an iPhone yeah. sh photo like, like the rest. Selfie, like we're being right, that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which in that, which is this is interesting because the rest of her photos on this photo dump are iPhone photos. They're like camera cell phone photos yeah. of just her like One casual. One of her in her dressing room. Right, like, this, is like a, this looks like it was taken from the, the actual editing yeah. of the movie. I agree. So she has this seemingly, she put the, she included this in the photo dump. Um, it's interesting to me because, and she did, she did tag her in the photo, which you can do on Instagram. You can like tag them within yeah. the photo, but she did not tag her in the caption. Yeah. Which is interesting to me because like, okay, Olivia she tagged, Wilde. like makeup, hair, she, yeah, she ta Exactly. The she movie. tagged makeup, hair, costuming, the art director maybe. Yeah. So, like She tagged a, a select few mm -hmm. crew members. She tagged them by name in the caption. Yeah. She did not tag Olivia Wilde in the caption, which is telling to me. And no even Harry. this, no Harry either. <laughs> yeah. And even this photo here is telling to me because again, the rest of her photo dump, it's like it's like casual, candid moments, yeah. like actual behind the scenes moments taken from People seemingly she seemingly enjoyed spending yes, exactly, time with and working exactly. with. Exactly. But here, this is a cold. This is just oh, we were just like on doing a scene. I thought this might well actually be a scene from the movie. I, I think it looks like a real scene from the movie to me. Yeah. Who knows? But like the fact that she didn't post. One photo of her and Olivia Wilde, just a quick little selfie from the set. It, first of all, well, I wonder, did that even happen? I was going to say, do, do you think there even is photos I wonder, I wonder of if there together? are. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But like, I think this speaks volumes to me that 
Florence Pugh went out of her way to, I think she, and by the way, we should also mention real quick in that Vulture article that it says that Florence Pugh, after that screaming match, yeah. actually went into negotiations with Warner Brothers to discuss how and when she was going to promote this movie. Yep. Because she was so irate and said, I want nothing to do with this movie. Apparently, that's what the reporting saying. I want nothing to do with this movie. I'm not going to promote it. Warner Brothers had to bring her into a meeting, so she had to talk to the head of the studio at the time, and they had to come to some kind of agreement with her, like, hey, we get it. You're upset, but you still need to promote this movie in some capacity. She has done that. It's the, she's done the bare minimum promotion. Yeah. And I think that's part of the deal. I think this might be part of the deal as well. Like, hey, whatever promotion you do, if you're going to mention Olivia Wilde, like, please. Make sure you post one they, photo. I think they might be, I, I, frankly, I think they might have been begging her. Please, yeah. by the love of God, post a photo with Olivia Wilde to show that you had something, anything, yeah. anything. And I think this is the middle ground they came yeah. to. This is telling to me. This is very telling to me. So there's Florence Pugh. Photo dump, thanking the crew, not tagging Olivia Wilde, not explicitly thanking her. Once again, just that final nail yep. in the coffin clue that, yes, something did in fact happen. Yeah. Once again, giving credence to that article, in my opinion. Now, after Florence Pugh's photo dump, um, there was another photo dump of sorts from another cast member in the movie, another actor in the movie, uh, Kiki Lane. Mm -hmm. uh, Kiki Lane plays a kind of a pivotal character. Here she is. Yeah. Um, and that's her on-screen husband in the movie. And they met on the set and they're together in And real they're life. together in real life, which is such a cool yeah. story. They're actually dating in real life now. Mm -hmm. uh, Ari... Uh, Ariel Stachel. Ariel Stachel, Kiki Lane, who, by the way, is a, she's a known actress. She's yeah. like, she's really good. She was on um, Beale, Street. the Bill Street. Yes, the yeah. Bill Street movie. Um, so here's the, here's the, here's more drama. So here's even more drama from this. So basically, yeah. when, as the movie was coming out and the reviews were pouring in or being re or publicly released, whatever, whichever come, comes first, um, people were making some criticism about the movie. And there's a lot of criticisms. More we'll get into in a second. But one of the criticisms was about her character. First of all, she is one of one of, if not a, a small, 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 very handful of yeah. people of color, specifically black people in the movie. There's mm -hmm. there's like a few black actresses like sprinkled throughout in the movie and like some of the dance scenes and stuff. Yeah. But as far as like prominent people featured on camera, she is literally the only black woman that I yeah. saw who was prominently featured on camera at all. But even then, and her husband's also a man of color too, but their characters were clearly downplayed in the movie. And yes. we're going to get to that in a second more, but they were downplayed in the movie and the critics took note of that. They said, Wow, it's a shame that um, Kiki Lane's character was reduced to nothing but a plot device who had little to no speaking ro lines, uh, and her character was essentially forgotten forgotten about as the plot moved along, mm -hmm. which is 100% true. I don't want to spoil it to, as to what happens to her character, but literally, it's her character is why Florence Pugh starts to go down the rabbit hole, if you will, mm -hmm. right? And then what Kiki Lane said... She, is she, it was a, it was like one last little shot. Do you want shot. to read it real quick? Yeah, let's read okay. it. So she posted this photo. She also posted a, a video of her and Ariel hanging out and chatting. This is a scene, this is a pivotal scene in the movie where like they're at a, a fancy ball slash yeah. dinner. From the movie, Kiki and Ariel are not in this scene in the movie. I was going to say, I don't they're remember not, They're not in there. the final product of this yeah. scene. Th they obviously shot for this scene. Mm -hmm. They were there for this scene. It sounds like they might have had some speaking lines for the scene. That was all cut on the editing room floor. Mm -hmm. And Kiki Lane had something to say about it. Here's what she so said. So she said, the best thing about hashtag don't worry darling is that I was lucky enough to meet Ariel Stash. She wrote, sharing photos and videos of the pair on set. They cut us from most of the movie, but we are thriving in real life. Love you, Ari. She included the hashtags, hashtag got my check, hashtag got my man, and wow. hashtag everything happens for a reason. Hashtag got my check. check. <laughs> wow. So basically, our, uh, Kiki there is saying... Yeah, so they we had more speaking lines. We had more scenes that were shot where we were actually involved in this freaking movie. And by the way, she was on the top billing of this movie on the mm -hmm. posters. Her name was her name was literally included on the poster on the poster in the marketing material for this movie. But she did no. I was wondering why she did wasn't doing press. She and did now not it do makes any. Sense. She did hardly. I don't think she did any press no, at all. I don't she think did she no did any. press. Ariel definitely didn't do any press. No. Uh, so, so they include her name on the on the marketing and the billing and the posters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, Kiki Lane, barely in the movie at all. Her character barely talks in the movie, is literally just used as a plot device. And it wasn't fleshed out, which I And it wasn't to, even like, a fleshed out character or I'm anything. No, that, yeah. no backstory or anything yeah. whatsoever. Uh, and now Kiki Lane apparently is uh, a little salty about it, which yeah. frankly- It's understandable. Uh, totally understandable and warranted. That's what I want to say. So basically, I it's clear to me from that caption that Kiki Lane is, she's mad. She's a little mad about the fact that her character was reduced to nothing, essentially. Yeah. That her scenes were all cut out. 
and that Olivia Wilde and or the studio people decided, yeah, we're just not this character's not that important. We're just going to kind of brush you off to the side. I'm so happy for her that she met her boyfriend yes. now and that they're that they're happy Honestly, together. But it's just it's, it's also still, it's, it's yeah. telling to me how many problems there actually were with this movie beyond beyond the Florence, Florence Pugh and Olivia. and Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles stuff. Um, now we can get into let's first of all talk about the box office before okay. we get into the review of the movie. This movie did well. Yes. It performed well. Mm -hmm. People went to go see this movie. It seems that the drama and the intrigue got asses in the seats. And seat. the Harry fans. We yeah. have to know if the Harry fans drove you know, a lot I of wanna, this. It's interesting you say that because I, I hear a lot about this. Oh, the Harry fans. First of all, our, our, I know that he has fans, obviously, but like, who? Where, where, what is the data on this? What? Is, where are people getting this from other than just like a glimpse at Twitter? Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't understand. Like, I are, are we just assuming that Harry fans actually went? Like, who's doing the polls on this? Like, I, I I I didn't see there was something about the demographics, but I didn't. Are we look just into assuming it, that Harry fans just, flooded the box office? Is I mean, that what we're actually all, assuming? There was just all of these, you know, videos of them in the theater screaming. Is that is that true? Wow, maybe, okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, but I didn't. But I didn't. But again, those were like fan videos. I don't know if that was like a. There who, was a lot. Who of knows those. if there was if that I'm was not actually? Sure. A I don't want to. So right, who knows that if that out. was actually a movement or not? But you're right. Yeah. Like there may have well been a, a Harry factor. I'm sure yeah. there might have to some extent there was. But any at any rate. People want to go see it. Mm -hmm. it, it I'm not going to say it killed at the box office. It definitely but didn't it kill. It surprised some people because for a while, because of all this drama that was going on behind the scenes and all the bad press, um, there were like pe people in the market research field who who do this professionally. They were estimating for a long while, like, oh my god, this is going to hurt the movie. This is going to hurt the movie. We think the movie is going to come out to like, you know, ten to fifteen million, maybe, which is yeah. not not good. So the expectations were kind of low. And then as things kind of went along, they kind of started going up and down, up and down, fluctuating a little bit. And then lo and behold, in the Thursday previews, it was like $3.1 million on Thursday previews, which is pretty solid. And then from those projections, uh, the estimations were like, oh, my God, people were expecting as high as $21 million. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. Like, no, like people yeah, are really I mean interested in this movie. They're going to go flock out to see it. Um, and in the end... The numbers kind of bared out to somewhere in the middle. It, it, it ended up being like 19.2 or 19.4 million. Domestically. 19, yeah, 19 million. Internationally. Internationally. So it made what? Uh, like $29 million? Yeah, and it took 30, and it was $35 million to make. It was, a so. it was a cheap movie to make, relatively speaking. Uh, $35 million to make it. Yeah. Not that much money. Um, and this movie is definitely going to make its money back, which I guess is all Warner Brothers really cares about, right? So, Because they're only releasing then, two movies this year. Warner Bros.? Yes. In they, theaters, that's you mean, why right? They moved to, we're not going to get, I'm going to get into that. But yeah, so Black Adam and Don't Worry Darling. Oh, wow. So I they didn't really realize had to bank. They only on had those, two theatrical or maybe releases. maybe it was the rest of the year. But I'm pretty sure those were the two main ones because that's why they moved They moved a bunch of stuff. So oh, they, wow. So they were banking on Don't on Worry the, Darling and Black Adam making and, and, money. And frankly, the, the Don't Worry Darling movie, you know, especially at first when the trailers were first being released and it was being discussed, it was being talked about as a very serious movie, dramatic. There was a lot of buzz, like Oscar buzz too. Like, oh my God, is Harry Styles like, going to kill this? Like, is Florence you know what I mean? There was a lot of buzz about this movie, a lot of critical hype yeah. about this movie at first. Um, and in the end, yeah, it did well and it, it performed at the box office. And again, it's going to make Warner Brothers its money back. I'm not sure if it's going to make them a ton of profit mm -hmm. on this. You know what I mean? I'm sure like over time it'll make them a little bit of profit. But I don't know if I even though like, yes, it did exceed expectations at the box office. And I guess like on paper, it's it can be deemed as a success. In my mind, I think this is more this is more of a headache for Warner Brothers. You know what I mean? I think they were relieved that it was finally out. Yeah, it was finally out. And I think they were also relieved by the numbers. Like, okay, well, shoot. Like, after all that, like, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll take we'll, it. We'll, we'll take it. We'll yeah. do okay, I guess. But, and then the actual movie. Yes. Then the actual movie comes out. I got and, thoughts. Um, I got thoughts. So, I saw it twice. Yeah. I saw it, um, I saw it twice this weekend because I needed to absorb it and, like, d uh, dissect it and analyze it. After seeing it the first time, I had mixed feelings. I, I walked away thinking, like, wait, what? That's it? And then I was like, well, hold on. Let's let's piece it together. Let's let's see what stands out, what doesn't stand out. What are the themes that they're trying to communicate? Did they communicate it well? How are the performances? Uh, right off the bat, I knew Harry Styles. I, as the movie was going along, I was very disappointed in Harry Styles' performance. He He's not, from so far from what I can see, he's not that great of an actor. He shows flashes of potential from mm -hmm. what I can see. Like, he's... He's, in my opinion, like Harry Styles throughout the movie, first of all, I think he was miscast. He doesn't look like a man. He has a, he has a boy's face. He has a baby face. He looks like some skinny. He doesn't look like a man's man. Like like Don Draper from that period in, in Mad Men looks like a man from the 50s and 60s, like a man's man, right? And I'm, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm not, not all men look like that, obviously, but like Harry Styles doesn't look like husband material to me in the movie. He's like, so he looks like a, like a, he, he looks like a teenager. He looks like a, like a 19 year old guy. Like, oh yeah, hey baby, like what's, anyway, so. 
but as far as his performance goes, I he's either, in my opinion, he was either too low or too high. He yeah. can never find the middle ground. He could just never find the even performance. Like there's a there's a lot of scenes of his where he's like screaming, like getting crazy. Those are the easy ones, though. It's easy to scream. People in my theater were laughing. What during that? Like, during, no. And I was during. That they were one, laughing at those scenes. People behind me were like the couple people were laughing. Oh god. And I, was, I, 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 and I was, was like, that's mean. I, like, there were, I was, come on. I, maybe in some of those, I might have been internally giggling to myself a little bit. But wow, that's see, that's telling. It was like, but it was just a couple people yeah and like some sometimes so like those those dramatic scenes of his where he's like yelling and getting very emotional that to me is easy acting anybody yeah. can do that anyone can just ah, go crazy and just like that's that's easy but it's the subtlety scenes the scenes that are more subtle that require more acting you need to show expressions and emotions through your eyes through your face through your gestures and your tone all of that was botched by him unfortunately yeah. and like there's like scenes when he's like arguing with alice and there's one scene i, I made a, a, a I made a tiktok about this uh, kind of highlighting some scenes of his that I thought were like less than impressive and there's like one scene where it's kind of a pivotal scene where she's basically like trying to convince him like no something's going on you're not listening to me right they're arguing in their bedroom and he and she's like she's on a level of like emotion that he's not on yeah he's she's up here he's down here and he goes he says the line is something like it's like oh Alice like um what do you say like it's like you're it's, oh you're, Alice you're overreacting he, he just said it though he's like yeah. he wasn't it wasn't like Alice you're like you're overreacting like there's no emotion behind it. there was yeah. nothing there was no umph I was like he Jesus needed Christ to give more he needed to give more like he needs to give more I th and I agree I think he has potential he does um, he has flash there were some flashes of but potential but I think this role was was too big for him it was at this point. I and think frankly, I'm not, and I know this might be controversial. Sorry, I didn't you. No, I'm Sorry. just gonna say you're right, but like, I this might be a controversial take, but in hindsight, and I don't, you look, if Shia LaBeouf was attached first, and if, in hindsight, would he have done better in the role? Probably. He's he's a he's a more experienced yeah. actor. He might have been too much though. What you think so? Because I think he's a little too, a little too much. We needed someone like that wasn't as yeah. wild as Shia, but needed to that had more experience. Yeah, than I agree. Shia. Maybe another than actor. Harry. Maybe another actor entirely someone would have been middle. better. But I think Shia yeah. LaBeouf would have done better in the performance oh, than yeah. Harry did. Anyway, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Harry Styles was a big disappointment. Does not he's not that good of an actor thus far, in my opinion. But you know, we'll see where he goes. But I got to be honest. The let's just talk about the plot real quick. It's it's convoluted. It's without giving away too much and spoiling things. It's convoluted. Like it. First of all, it it imme immediately throws you into the scene of what's happening. Like they're okay. Okay, they're in suburbia. It's the fifties. They're like housewives and husbands, and they're all friends, and they get together, and then quickly you learn, oh, they're part of some kind of society, and it's like separate from the rest of society, and like there's a lot of rules, and the wives are kind of closed off from the secrets of what's happening. Um, and they're, you know, Florence and Harry are very in love. And they're having sex all the time. There's a passionate relationship. Okay. And then, and then all of a sudden, thanks to Kiki Lane's character, again, who was sidelined, uh, you start realizing, oh, something's amiss. Something's going on. Then Florence P starts catching on, but it was all, it was all too predictable for me. You know what I mean? Like the beats were too predictable. I was like, okay. And then, and I gotta be honest, I felt like they just, there was too many scenes, back-to-back -back scenes of just Florence just being like gaslit and also just be, be thinking she's crazy. And and also like, I didn't like the idea, they were trying to do too many mind games. Like they were trying to do too many like tricks. hallucinations. Yeah, hallucinations. And, she, and all of a sudden she's like falling, she's like dreaming and there's a lot of dream sequences. Those are never really explained, frankly. No. Like the black, the dancers in the black and white, she's yeah. like underwater. Like what the, yeah. what are you, what is happening right yeah. now? It's like, what? And, and then all of a sudden you realize, yeah, there's something amiss. Chris Pine's sketchy, something's going on. So what is it? And eventually you realize you're, you're going to find out eventually at the end what it is. But even when when the payoff came and you realize what the big plot twist was, what, what's the big twist? Even when you realize what it was, I was like, wait, what? Like, that's it? That's what that's what this is about. And that's all this is. This really is. So without giving it away, the three there's there's a few movies that I feel like that this script and this whoever wrote this movie or came up with the idea or whatever it kind of ripped off like three big movies for me. Like literally took three big movies, mashed them into one, said, okay, here it is. And with the feminist little spin or whatever, right? Yeah. It was Stepford Wives, obviously, which is the obvious comparison. Everyone's been comparing it to that because it's the same idea, suburbia, but something's amiss or something more sinister mm -hmm. going on. So Stepford Wives, it was Truman Show for me. Have you seen that Truman Show? I've never seen it. What with Jim Carrey? Damn, it's a classic. You got to see that. It's it's the same idea where he's like trapped in this world. I know what it's about. Everybody's like yeah. fake around him, and he's like he's realizing that this is this is not reality. Yeah. So it's a rip off of Step for Wives, Truman Show, and also without giving up, without giving too much away, Matrix. It's yeah. the Matrix. The whole 
simulation thing and all that. It's like, wait, what? Like, okay, yeah. so they're just plugged into some simulation. Okay, cool. Uh, and also there was like, there was also some things of like, um, uh, Black Swan, like with the whole like the the dancing and the ballet. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, there's some Black Swan, and, like the creepy imagery and stuff. Like, okay, Black Swan stuff there. Also, Florence Pugh being con consistently gaslit, and everyone around her telling her everything's fine. That's Rosemary's Baby for me. So there's like four or five movies that it immediately brought to my mind. Like, uh, okay, this I guess this this is just a mashup of all of those. And in the end, to me, the movie had nothing new to say. It had nothing profound to say. I know Olivia Wilde thinks of herself as a very profound, progressive person, and she's all about women's rights and feminism, and I get it. Those are, those are worthy causes to champion, I suppose. But when you have nothing really new to say about it other than just men suck and they take away women's autonomy, which I guess is sort of relevant to, to the to the, yeah. the abortion talk today, whatever, but it was it felt empty. It just felt like a lot of empty prose, a lot of empty themes, just kind of like, I get your intention, I suppose, but it didn't come across through and it was too discombobulated. It was kind of all over the place. The pacing was sort of uneven. And even at the end, I, I know like there's cliffhangers and you some ambiguity you want to leave for the audience. Like, oh, they got to figure it out on their own. But some things needed to be tied up. Like, first of all, yep. the red airplane, what the hell was that all about? That was never explained. Some characters just- I can tell you the theories on that, but it's a spoiler. Yeah, but that's what so I'm I saying. Like, it. It's like there's too, like when you leave me theorizing too much at the end about mm -hmm. too many things, that's a problem. Yep. You can leave me theorizing about one or two things, but when there's like four or five things and I'm like, wait, this was left unanswered. This was left unattended. This was left not tied up. That's a problem. That means to me that's a sloppy script and yep. you don't know how to really tie the movie together. Mm -hmm. And even the end chase sequence is ridiculous. Like she's just like driving away, guys in red. The, even the guys in the red like suits were ridiculous. It was so corny. I'm like, what is this? This looks like a cartoon. Like, boom, coming, dragging her away. It's like, it's like, what is happening right now? So it was just, in the end, it ended up being more silly than anything to me. And uh, there was like some good moments in there, I suppose, some good shots. Aesthetically, it looked really nice. It was shot well, lit well. The production design was fabulous. The costuming was fabulous. That's all good and fine, but that's the easy shit, frankly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, big picture, I just didn't think it was good. Yeah. I, I, at first, I, I was trying to find some goodness in it, and there sure, certainly is some goodness in it, but at the end, I thought it was just a flop, just a miss. A misfire of a movie, not as profound as it thinks it is. It has nothing really new to say. The acting wasn't even all that great. Florence Pugh was like the only really good thing about that movie because she was great. And But again, she also, even with her, and I love Florence Pugh, but this is a bad decision to, to sign on to this movie because you've already done this role before. It was called Midsummer. You did it a few years ago. So I agree with a lot of what you said. So... It took me a few days to process what I watched. Right when I got out of the movie, I literally texted you and I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Right. Because I was like, my head was spinning and I was like, that was it. Like, is this, is there more? Like, wh what is happening? Um, ultimately, I thought the film was just okay. I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was great. I don't think it's as horrible as the critics say, but I don't think it's as great as the audience score, which was in like the set was 79%. And like, so you the, think the reality is somewhere in the middle? Yeah. I'd okay. give it a solid C. Okay. I'd give it a solid C. There were solid C. a okay. solid C, you know, <laughs> passing, but not like, I think people should see it if they give their own opinions on it. But yeah. I don't think it's like, oh my God, like it was ultimately like somewhat of a disappointment because yeah. it, we hyped it up for there so long. There was so long. much hype, right? And as I expected, like you mentioned, Florence Pugh, Pugh, um, Florence Pugh carried this movie. She did. No surprises there. I liked the cinematography. I liked the costumes, like the sets, like the aesthetic, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, the direction was actually decent, but again, okay. how much of that was actually Olivia and how much of That's that was actually question. Florence? That's a good question. Who knows? We'll never um, know. There was a lot I didn't like. One thing that I feel like a lot of people aren't pointing out, and I have no shame in admitting this. So between Olivia's comments that she had mentioned and about um, in the trailers as well, I thought there was going to be a lot more sex in this movie. So you, funny you say that. I okay. did too. There the was two like, scenes were in the trailer. They were and like the, the dinner that was scene, a, the dinner and scene the one where Chris he's Pine's like watching. Yeah, and that's both it. Both in the both in the only ones in the and movie, and that's the only time they really have sex. Really, yes, and and it's they, not even like it's just like oral sex. And, she, and like, he's just like, yeah, and she yeah. and she's like, oh, yeah, and then like, you oh, know, like whatever the dinner she just made. Yeah, she knocks it over. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. And, and the, then, the uh, it wasn't yeah. even as sexed up as it, as it I promised it was to be. It was going to be super erotic, like this whole movie. Yeah, like, it wasn't. And I don't want to sound like, like a horn dog. Titanic I was, ex was yeah. more erotic, th erotic than that. I was expecting way yeah. more sex. And Olivia was like, you know, men don't come in this will be only women. So I was like, okay, I'm expecting way more sex. And oh, I'm like, that was it. Those were in the trailers. Yeah, and like... It 
yeah, it's like okay, and like, and I guess she she wanted to make a point about oral sex too. Yeah. It's like okay, which is that's like, great, but like I thought there was gonna be more. Yeah, they made it seem like there was gonna be more. Although sex. I gotta be honest, I didn't need to see more oral sex. I'll say that like the two scenes of oral sex. Was, far, if they just wanted to have a normal sex scene, that would have been kind of cool and like, interesting. It and like, I mean, I think we needed, we just needed more. I agree. Of that. I totally agree. Like their little kisses, like that yeah. was. Yeah, I they I thought there was gonna be way more sex and the hugging and stuff. It's yeah, like, okay, nobody cares about sex. that. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's such a funny point. That's actually yeah. really funny. <laughs> True, yeah, I thought there was gonna be more. Totally. Um, Harry Styles, honestly, I don't think he was. I, I kind of chimed in on this when you were talking, but I don't think he was horrible. Um, right. I think like a this kind of role was like again too big for him sure. to start. Um, after just having like a barely speaking role in Dunkirk. Yep. Um, and he's I, got My Policeman next, and there's kind of mixed reviews about that too. Um, I don't think it was laughable like some people in the theater were saying, and some things I've seen on TikTok. And I do think he has a potential, but I think that he needed to. This was too big of a jump from Dunkirk. I think he needed something in um, smaller and in between. And sure. I feel like he maybe needs some training. I agree. Um, I, do, I do think it's potential, but I think this was too much for him. And I, I really hope this doesn't like yeah, like, star, like, your, like not... your musical star power alone is not enough. That doesn't translate. Like, you, we need acting, yeah. dude. Like you got to act a little bit. And I, and I hope this doesn't like maybe he'll take like a break after like my policeman and um, and don't worry, darling, sure. from acting. But I think that um he probably should and did some training and then step back and then maybe try it in a few years. Some people right. have like forgotten about this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I agree. Um, and by I, the way, this this kind of left him bruised a little bit too because of his association yeah, with Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde walks away from this bruised and by affiliation, so does he a little bit. So yeah. there you go. And ultimately, I the big thing you mentioned this, I had a lot of issues with the script. The script was a mess. I think that um, a common criticism was a third act was like hot mess. And the pacing, like you mentioned, way too quickly yeah there's a plot twist i'm like oh, okay and then it's like boom 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 cliffhanger end and i was like you couldn't even process what was no. happening it happened so quickly right. and then you're and then you're you know florence is giving this like a very emotional performance and you're trying to like you know feel with and her you're trying to then, like but take but it all in the story right. and then, it, and and then he, it ends and it's a cliffhanger i'm like what the fuck the whole, excuse me the, the cliffhanger whole point, <gasps> yeah she no. yes, and i'm like i'm like the whole point of the story is i'm not gonna again I'll spoil it is this whether or not she like gets out of this right. situation and right. then you don't know. And I'm like, and I told Andy, our, one of our producers this, I said, I said, Andy, I'm like, when it comes to cliffhangers, I think cliffhangers are only okay yeah. if there's a sequel or it's a TV show. Right. But I agree. It, and I, and I, yeah, this like, is a one-off for sure. I, um, yeah, there ain't going to no be no sequel. sequel. And as you mentioned, like I'm all for, you literally took the words out of my mouth. I'm all for having films have, um, when you can give your own inter you can interpret things and sure. oh, like what have happened there sure, there sure. were way too many questions too many I've loose seen ends so many tiktok videos people like literally have these lists like what did this mean what did this mean what right. did this mean and then like so many things about like the core like like not anything like abstract or like anything like that they were like plot points that were not answered like yeah. pl so many plot holes and i'm like i needed to know and it, it, i think it should have been longer because they needed longer. there were so many things that needed to be answered so many I questions needed to be answered and there's actually and there should have been one final scene with chris pine and florence Pugh, in my opinion exactly like because he just and i don't want to ruin it but like he all of a sudden he's just gone and like there's and no then Gemma Chan, there, like what yeah like what, exactly she, what's, like, what's she happening was great in the movie too but then i was like okay so then what happens after right you don't know what happens after and, and yeah. they needed more and like obviously there's no sequel happening so they should have given more and i'm really disappointed on that because because yes. I wanted to know more of the story. And I do want to end on this. Because once the once the story was sort of revealed as to like what was actually happening, you, I was curious, like, okay, yeah, like, I'm like, all right. let, let's let's explore this a little bit. But no, it's like, you're right. They show you what's happening, and then they go, Okay, now she's leaving, and that's it. Like that's yeah, that's the and end I of was it. like, Well, I have so many questions. And right. I was, when I started, I got really interested at that point. Yeah, and that's, then it that's was when I actually got interested. And then it was like over, and yeah, I was so mad because I, I wanted to know more. And I do want to note that. This isn't the original script. Oh, yeah. There yeah. Were, you can read. I didn't. You can actually read Had the whole original script. Stuff, but there yeah. were so many details that were in the original script in the original story. Okay. That were not. I heard that Olivia Wilde just kind of picked this one up from the blacklist. Yeah, and just kind of like just repurposed it or whatever. There's no victory project in the original script. There's all these things, but there were so many things about you know. I'm not in that spoiling like what happened where Alice is like in people in the other world kind of like right. wondering where Alice is because those are questions I had I'm like what's happening outside of this yeah 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 and, and also what's all the, what was all that rumbling that was happening all the yeah. time like I don't know there's about, so yeah. many theories but it's like yeah. this is not like this isn't a Marvel movie there's no shouldn't be this many theories about right. a movie this, I agree they should be, it's a thriller you want to know how it ends right you got the suspense and then they left you hanging like yeah, there's too many like, unsatisfied yeah, as you're going along there's a thread here there's a thread there but at the end there's like it's like 10 loose threads it's like, wait, yeah. what? Like, what the fuck? And they're like, oh, sorry, you got to yeah. figure it out. Like, that's so a, that's a like, crappy movie. I was disappointed and I was unsatisfied and I really I wanted more. But Florence carried and I know this is a supersized episode now, but we had to talk about this. Because we did. 
at needed, length. It needed and to we be did. discussed at length. You know, hopefully and the saga is finally over. I'm hoping it is over. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, tiring. I'm, unless there's more reporting that comes out about it, but I'm exhausted too. We've <laughs> talked about it for weeks now. It's been a fun ride. Yes. The dust has settled, yeah. and I don't know if it settled. It settled better for others than it did for for Olivia Wilde, but. Yeah. Anyway, that was a that was a good one. That yeah. was a good. Um, yeah, and we uh, we'll leave you guys there. Uh, stream stream the podcast on Apple, Spotify, iHeart. We're on YouTube. We're on the website, mm. and we'll check in with you guys next time. Talk be a little more of a traditional episode, but thank you for tuning in, and we will check you guys later. See you next time. See ya. Mm-hmm.